All right, so somebody asked me a question about my thoughts on children with black belts. Now, this is going to go into my underlying philosophy about black belts in general. Um, as far as black belts are concerned in martial arts schools, I think that they simply should not exist. Um, the way that it's currently structured, I think that it's not a reliable um, structure. I don't believe that it's demonstrating anything of any value. Now, I understand the structure of the, um, the college degree. You know, obviously they're in, they're in place for a reason. And the effectiveness of it, you know, I mean, is debatable, but it's, it's proven through the test of time that they're using this as a measure of intelligence. So that's what people's minds are geared towards, you know, using diplomas and degrees to signify different levels of intelligence. So when you go to a certain school and you pay out all this money and you put all this time and effort into obtaining a certain degree, it's supposed to represent something, something of value. So when somebody says that I'm, you know, they're a graduate from Harvard University, it's supposed to signify something. When somebody says that they just completed medical school at a certain college, it's supposed to signify something significant. But degrees of intelligence are going to be different compared to the martial arts. The martial arts understand that it is an art. Okay, so art is creative self-expression. And really, that is not really up for people's judgment. You know, that is just something where it comes from within the soul. And in addition, martial arts not only is something mental, but it's also something physical. So if an individual cannot demonstrate physical mastery, then there's a problem. Not only do they need to demonstrate a mental mastery, but they need to demonstrate a physical mastery, also a spiritual like mastery. And this is so hard to gauge that the structure that is currently being established is not a reliable structure because there's nobody of a reliable authority that's overseeing these ranking systems. So meaning when you have the government of the United States that's regulating certifications, that's the governing agency to dictate and determine what is authentic and what is fraudulent. There's no such thing for the martial arts, but for the government they have, you know, the U.S. military, they have um, the police departments, you know, they have certifications that are governed by the state, you know, and these certifications have value. They have meaning because it's reg basically it's regulated by law. Anything that's not regulated by law, it's very much hard to regulate according to certain strict standards. You know, so when a, rep when a reputation is being built by a, for a certain school, like a university, that reputation is being built through many years. You know, but you don't see that type of reputation in the martial arts because the martial arts is just not, it's not established enough. It's not developed enough. There's not enough money supporting the martial arts, not enough people that are supporting it in order to bring it to a level of respectable, where there's something of value placed into a certain level of achievement. You know, you got like the NBA, you got the NFL that are representing the elite in the sport, in that certain sport. 
But when it comes to martial art, there is no such thing. You know, when something turns into a sport, no matter be wrestling, fencing, boxing, it's more easily measurable because you're just basically assessing an individual's development in that one specific thing. But the martial art is very comprehensive. It's just, it's not just a physical, but it's just a mental and it's a spiritual. It's like, it's like everything all together. And that's really, really difficult to assess. You know, so as far as the question, going back to the question about children with the, with the black belts, I just don't think anybody should have black belts because none of it has any value. Because there's, there's nothing, there's nobody governing these black belts to, to make it representing what the martial arts should be represented by. Like there's no, nobody heading it. It's like in the U.S. we got the president of the United States that's running the entire country. He's the head of it, but there's nothing like that for the martial arts. There isn't. So what you end up having is you got a bunch of different martial arts schools with different names. You know, you got somebody representing like Chole Fat Kung Fu, Wing Chun Kung Fu, somebody else that's trying to claim Ji Kune Do. You got people claiming Taekwondo, Hapkido, Aikido, Kuk Suwon, Eagle Claw, Praying Mantis Kung Fu. Um, then people use the, the term wushu. And then you got people that, that claim Thai boxing. I mean, there's just so many different things. And every single school is going to have different regulations, like different standards. And it's like, when there's all these different standards and there's really nobody there to govern it for the all, then what does this belt, what does this rank signify outside of the school? It doesn't really signify much because everything is just everywhere. The standards are all different. So you can have a certain school that gives out a black belt to a child, a certain school that gives out a black belt to a criminal, a certain school that gives out a black belt to a bully, a certain school that gives out a black belt to <coughs> somebody that has reached a high level of achievement. Somebody else that gives a black belt to somebody who has reached a high level of achievement but is no longer representing that through his current expression. So, I just don't, th I, I, I personally don't think that the black belt should be something that should even exist. Um, not in its current state. It has to be something that's more alive, more living. Um, to me, I would, the way that I would do it, what I would recommend is just something that happens maybe on a yearly basis. You know, somebody gets to a certain level of rank for that year and they need to prove themselves to be able to obtain the same rank for the next year. Or, 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 or rank above for the next year. Like, it only lasts one year. That's my recommendation. Just like with the Chicago Marathon, it happens once a year. So they have a marathon once a year and then they get a medal for that year and they get a time for that year. People should be ranked on a yearly basis. If they cannot maintain their level of rank, then they should no longer claim that rank. They might, be the, they might be able to say, I was a black belt in 1999, but now it's the year 2016, and I'm no longer a black belt. Or maybe I was a black belt in 2005, I was a black belt in 2006, I was a black belt in 2007, but now it's 2016 and I'm no longer a black belt. Like it needs to be current in order to have any meaning to me that's how it should be done. 
as far as children having black belts, I mean, I don't think it's for children. I think a black belt is supposed to represent a high level of training beyond the police officer, beyond somebody that's in the military, beyond somebody that's in the Navy SEALs, beyond somebody that's a professor, beyond somebody that's a lawyer, beyond somebody that's a doctor. Like, a black belt is supposed to represent you something beyond. So, you will never see a child be the President of the United States. You will never see a child enter into the NBA. You will never see a child enter into the NFL. You never see a child enter into, you know, to be a lawyer. You will never see a child become a judge. You never see a child be a doctor. And if you do see a child reach that level, you know, they have to be at least 18. You know, even if they are 18 and they've reached that level, they haven't reached their peak. But like there's rare cases like a LeBron James who, you know, extremely talented, you know, early on. Or someone like a talent, the like Tiger Woods, extremely talented early on. I mean, but there's still, it's not just about the physical development, but it's also about the mental and spiritual. So there's just certain things that you just, time is needed in order to progress. You know, but all I'm saying is that it's not just about age. Just because somebody's older than you doesn't mean that they're better than you. But age is one of the factors that's important in addition to the performance, in addition to the expression. Um, It's, it's just hard to say because, I mean, you got women, you got children, you got people with disabilities, you got adults, you got uh, the elderly. It's like somebody that's given out these ranks, it's like their decision upon where this person's level of development is according to their current state, no matter if they're a child, a woman, a person with disability, somebody that's a young adult, an older elderly person, it's like the assessment has to be genuine and it has to be, there's a reasoning behind why they've been given a certain rank for why they have a certain rank. So everybody's going to assess differently. And a creator of a, of a style, a, a, a founder of a school, will be the one who will determine who is qualified to reach a certain level of rank according to this person's standards. You know? But as I stated, I feel that it is necessary for it to be a changing thing, not something that's stagnant. Like a person could be reach a high level now, but it doesn't mean that they're going to maintain that level for the future. And I think that is more of what's relevant and important opposed to just being whether or not children should have black belts. It's not just about children. There's children that, that have black belts that shouldn't, and there's adults that have black belts that should not. Um, there's a lot of people out there that are having, that, that are that are claiming black belts that should not be claiming it. You know, it's just too unregulated. And when it's so unregulated, it devalues the entire meaning behind what these black belts are supposed to represent. But in addition, it's not even just about a black belt, you know. It's like anything can be used as a symbol to symbolize a high level of achievement. So um, somebody that graduated from Harvard they don't get a black belt, they get a degree. 
You know, they get a piece of paper that's signed off by the university to signify that this person has reached this level of achievement. Um, when you go to the Olympics and you get the gold medal, you don't get a black belt, you get a gold medal for reaching a high level. When the NBA, when they win the championship, they don't get a black belt, they get the trophy. Um, other tournaments, when they win the tournament, they don't get a black belt, they get money. They might get $10,000. The Ninja Warrior, American Ninja Warrior, the, the winner of that, he didn't get a black belt, he got a million dollars. When you win the lottery, you don't get a black belt, you get, you get money. So, it's not about the black belt at all. You know, in my school, you don't get a black belt, but you get recognition. You get, right as of right now, you get a certificate, you get a badge, you get a handshake, you get recognition from other people within the school that you've reached this level of achievement. It's not about the black belt. People are just so fixated on this thing. It's just something that I see to be very much. It's, it's sad that people are so fixated on this thing that really, especially in now, in the current days, really has no value at all. It really doesn't. It means nothing in my eyes. You know, um, what is even more significant than a black belt in my eyes is somebody, okay, he just goes, gets certified by the state to get concealed carry license. Now he's legally allowed to carry a firearm. That is so much more significant than any so-called black belt. And this is certified that you're given a license by the state, by the government. It's not just... A, school, a teacher at school this is the actual government and the government the you know regulates the law these are the people that have the power so this person with the gun legally is much more powerful in defending himself than any so-called black belt ever will be that is unarmed you know, so I see absolutely no value in the black belt. I feel that we need to, if anything, people that are running martial arts schools need to come up with new symbols that are living, not dead. And they need to uphold the standards of these what these symbols are supposed to represent. Even a wedding ring is supposed to be a symbol. You know, we, we live in a world full of symbols. So when you marry a woman, you don't give her a black belt, you give her a wedding ring. That's their tradition. Um, but we could use different symbols for different things. And this whole black belt thing is just completely outdated. And because it's been so corrupted and so many people have abused this symbol, uh, we need to come up with something else. You know, that, that holds meaning that where we could regulate, you know, who is allowed to carry the symbol and who's not. Like even, you know, my uniform, this is a symbol that I created for my school. It's not tradition, this is new, this is fresh, this is something that I created. And I'm gonna create other symbols, you know, to, to have new meaning. I'm not going off the old, you know, so, um, <sighs> that's the way I see it. Um, as far as the children are concerned, I think I've, I'm training adults, I'm training children. I see children, there's a lot of, there's a lot of potential in children, and I see that sometimes children do a lot of things better than what adults can do. Sometimes adults do better than what children could do in certain things, but children have a lot of unique talents as well. So, um, it's just more apparent that a child 
is has much more room for growth and development but in an adult people make the assumption that they might have reached the highest level but then a lot of times that's not the case so you see a child with a black belt you automatically see there's something wrong because you see more potential but it's the same thing with an adult he might be muscular he might be able to fight he might have a black belt but it doesn't mean that there's not room for growth there might be a spiritual lack in this person which makes it where, where there's such a lack in that spirit that he doesn't deserve the black belt either. So it's not just it's not that it's not just that children should be discriminated against as as far as not having black belts, but there's a lot of adults out there that are misrepresenting what the black belt should represent, and these individuals should not have a black belt either. And that's pretty much what I'm signifying with this video, is that there's a lot of people in this world that should not have black belts. Children, adults, everybody. You know, so much to the point where there needs to be something new to regulate um, a truly high level of development. And I think it's up to the real martial arts school owners to implement these new ideas and to put them, you know, put forth effort to make a change just like the founders of these arts have done in the past. Like, there was karate, but then the creator of Aikido said, no, I don't want to do karate. I want to do my own thing. I'm going to call it Aikido, and I'm going to have a new way. There was Wing Chun, and then Bruce Lee's like, no, I'm not doing Wing Chun. I'm going to create my own way. I'm going to call it Chi Kung Do, and this is our thing. There needs to be people out there, the real martial artists out there, need to break away from these traditions that have been corrupted, and they need to express their own way and do whatever they can to prevent corruption. Otherwise, all of this stuff has no meaning. All of it. So it's up to the school owners to make the difference.